Bones. This is Diagnosis Bona Corazza Bona. And today's topic is vaginal discharge. And it's very important to differentiate between physiological and pathological discharge. So let's first talk about uh, physiological discharge. So the amount of vaginal discharge could be different. It depends what's the day of your menstrual cycle. And uh, it's clear and stringy in the first half of the cycle and whitish and sticky after ovulation. And it tends to reduce in amount after menopause. So the normal bacterial flora includes lactobacilli. Uh, they produce lactic acid and uh, lactic acid uh, keeps the uh, vaginal flora uh, pH acidic, so it's below 4.7. And uh, other commercial bacteria include staphylococci, diphtheroids, and streptococci. So, and now let's talk about pathological discharge. And women may complain of increase in the amount of discharge, a change in the consistency or color, and the presence of an offensive odor. Also, can, uh, they can complain about irritation or itchy, dyspareunia, and pelvic or abdominal pain. So, and what information helps your doctor to understand uh, what condition is? It's uh, sexual history, STI risk factors, previous STIs, use of chemicals such as soaps, deodorants, pessaries and douches, also pregnancy possibility, drug therapy, it's uh, antibiotics or corticosteroids, and uh, associated medical conditions like diabetes. So the differential diagnosis should include consideration of normal discharge, vaginal candidiasis, bacterial vaginosis, STIs, foreign body, vulval dermatosis, atrophic vaginitis, and genital tract malignancy. So, and today we'll talk just about five conditions. So, let's get started. So, let's start with vaginal candidiasis. It's uh, caused by an overgrowth of yeasts, and it's usually candida albicans, or it also could be, but less common, of course, it's a candida glabrata, Candida tropicalis and Candida crusae. So it affects 75% of women on at least one occasion over a lifetime. Risk factors, it's um, players just before and during menstruation, pregnancy, high dose combined oral contraceptive pill, estrogen-based hormone replacement therapy, a course of uh, broad-spectrum antibiotics, diabetes mellitus, obesity, and other illnesses. So, and clinical features are intense vaginal and vulval pruritis, vulval vaginal erythema, vulval edema, fissures, and excavations. And it's important that for vulval vaginal candidiasis, uh, it will be white curd-like discharge also, superficial dyspareunia, stinging when passing urine, it's a dysuria. So, and symptoms may last just a few hours or persist for days, weeks, or rarely months. pH of vagina uh, tends to be in the normal range, so it's a, a 3.8 to 4.5, so it's acidic. But candida can occur over a wide range of pH. And the diagnosis is often confirmed by microscopy of a wet mound, vaginal swab, or vaginal smear. So, and treatment, it's a clotrimazole, mycanazole, and nystatin. So, next is bacterial vaginosis. And it's a polymicrobial condition characterized by changes in the normal vaginal flora. So it's a reduction in the key lactobacillus species and high concentration of anaerobic bacteria such as 
Gardnerella vaginalis. It's a uh, bacterial vaginosis is not sexual transmitted or contagiosis. Predisposing factors for bacterial vaginosis include recent use of broad spectrum antibiotics, decreased estrogen production, for example, if it's a postmenopausal woman, intrauterine device, and uh, increased number of sexual partners. Okay, and clinical features are so it's as a vulva and vagina are not inflamed. And if you see any vaginal burning or itching should be explained by another cause of vaginitis. In this case, it will be white or gray leathers, vaginal discharge. So, and also it could be dyspareunia and dysuria. So, okay, and you also have to know that 50% of women are asymptomatic. Let's talk about diagnosis now. We normally have a lot of bacilli, but now they are replaced by multiple small cocci. Also, there is clue cells. Uh, they, it's uh, epithelial cells from the lining of the vagina, and uh, but just with many of the cocci adherent to their cells. Vaginal pH is elevated, so it will be more than 4.5 it's in most patients and unlike in vaginal candidiasis it's a reduce below 4.5 so just use this ph test you can differentiate these two conditions it will be a fishy order on admixture of 10 percent of potassium hydroxide so it's a positive beef test treatment is metronidazole and clindamycin. And uh, actually, it's not always necessary to treat uh, bacterial genosis because uh, it could be self-limited. Uh, usually, treatment necessary during pregnancy to reduce any risk of complications related to infection. And uh, metronidazole can be used in pregnancy. Okay, and also there is a very funny mnemonic for Bacterial vaginosis, it's, um, I don't have uh, a clue why I smell fish in the vagina garden. So clue, it's a uh, clue cells. And also you can smell fish, it's a positive beef test. And uh, vagina garden, it's uh, because it's caused by Gardnerella vaginalis. Recognizes it's a sexual transmitted infection and caused by the protozoan parasite Trichomonas vaginalis. Trichomonas infection are most common in women aged 21 to 24 years and in women aged 48 to 51 years. And uh, there are a lot of complications. Trichomoniasis can cause term delivery and increase the risk of infertility in both men and women and it's also increased the risk of getting cervical cancer in women oh and uh, clinical features are it's a virulent thin malodorous vaginal discharge yellow green frothy all smelling discharge so sometimes it's also described as a fishy order so it's like here. Also, vulvo vaginal each vulvo vaginal burning, dyspareunia, and bleeding with sex. Also, it could be a painful, frequent urination, urethral discharge, and lower abdominal pain. And also, signs may include vulval erythema, vaginal discharge, elevated pH. So it will be more than. 4.5 or punctuate bleeding of the cervix. So um, if you see this strawberry cervix, it's a, a very strong sign of trichomoniasis, but it's quite rare, just 2% women have this sign. Let's now talk about a diagnosis. It's a, a red mound and you can see a motile trichomonads. And are visible just for 10 to 12 minutes. 
of the sample collection. Also use a nucleic acid amplification test. Okay, and now treatment. So you can use a, the oral antibiotic metronidazole, safe even for during pregnancy and lactation. And tenidazole or ernidazole are alternative for men and non-pregnant and non-lactating women. And the patient as well as the partner need to be treated at the same time. Two rest conditions. It's a chlamydiasis and gonorrhea. Chlamydiasis it's a sexual transmitted infection caused by the bacterium chlamydia trichomatis. Adjunct urinary chlamydia infection may cause very mild symptoms or no symptoms at all. And it's asymptomatic in approximately 70% of infected women and 50% of infected men. The complications of gene urinary chlamydia infection in women include, so it's a EID or pelvic inflammatory disease, evil infertility, ectopic pregnancy, sexual acquired reactive arthritis, also sexual acquired conjunctivitis, Perihepatitis syndrome, it's a Fritz Hay Curtis syndrome, and it's a uh, liver capsule inflammation which leading to the creation of adhesions. And these women will uh, feel a pain in right upper quadrant, and also you can see that liver function tests are normal because. Uh, this condition involves just a capsule of the liver. What clinical features could be? It's a dysuria, vaginal discharge, dyspareunia, increased dysmenorrhea, pelvic pain, and anorectal symptoms. And uh, mother-to-child transmission can result in chlamydia conjunctivitis and pneumonia in newborn babies. So uh, diagnosis include uh, it's um, chlamydia nucleic acid amplification test, and uh, it's often combined with a test for Neisseria gonorrhea and Trachomonas vaginalis. Also, you can do enzyme immunoassays. So treatment: doxycycline or azithromycin. Um, you need to do. Uh, this uh, test in AATs one more time after treatment to be sure that this treatment helped and uh, uh, of course uh, it could be this patient could be reinfected so it's a uh, um, due to this thing it's important to treat uh, both partners okay and the last condition is gonorrhea it's a disease is due to infection with the bacteria Neisseria gonorrhea, and it's also a sexual transmitted infection. And if the mother is infected, uh, gonorrhea may also be passed to the newborn uh, delivered vaginally, causing conjunctivitis. So uh, gonorrhea is asymptomatic in 10 to 15 percent of men, and in up to 80 percent of women and complications of gonorrhea are endometritis, salpingitis, tubal ovarian abscess, also chronic pelvic pain, ectopic pregnancy and infertility. Gynecocal infection during pregnancy can result in miscarriage, preterm delivery and postpartum endometritis. And vaginal transmission from mother to child can cause neonatal conjunctivitis. So symptoms for gonorrhea are vaginal bleeding, cervical friability, cervical motion tenderness, fullness or and tenderness of the adnexa, unilateral or bilateral, it could be lower abdominal pain, tenderness with or without rebound tenderness. And uh, it also can affect uh, joints and uh, also skin. So it's like these lesions, like here or here. 
So diagnosis is again an AATs and treatment it's a two uh, drugs, it's a tetriaxin and zitromycin.